Everybody and welcome to our first ever Monday morning with Mao. We have comrade. Yeah. Hold on. Do you hear the, the echo or is it just me? Just you. Just you. Okay. Um. I I, I just want to ask the audience. Um. Does anyone here hear the echo or? Um. I, I, I just want to ask the audience. Um. Does anyone here hear the echo or? Okay, good. Okay, they don't. Okay, excellent. Um, so, uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and w w what you do in China and and how you got involved in, I guess, um, education and media? Uh, actually, I'm a I'm a Chinese. Uh, my name is Adam. I'm a as a Chinese. I'm doing international trading, and uh, because. You know, most guys are interested in metric stuff. Uh, I'm not just work well done. If you really know, really, if you really want to study metric, you have to learn politics, economy, those stuff, those stuff as well. That's how I got involved in politics in the first place. And uh, given I'm a Chinese, so we learn the communist uh, ideology stuff at school. Then when you put them together, then this is just how. This is where I came from. Okay, so it's really funny because um, I, I sh showed you a chart um, over TikTok. I mean, not TikTok, sorry, over WeChat the other day, and um, it was uh, about uh, what Gramsci spoke about with the base and superstructure. And you said, "Oh, we learned this in middle school," and I was very shocked yeah. about that. <laughs> it's like uh, the common sense in China. Yeah. Okay. So, can can you uh, give people who are not like pretend that you are uh, talking to people? Okay. You pay. Okay. You don't have to pretend. Just talk, remember that you're talking to Americans. And can you give them a quick introduction on what is um, Mao Zedong thought? Uh, oh, oh, hold on. Oh, your volume is low. Let me fix it. Um, okay. Um, uh, okay. So go ahead. We're talking about the Mao Zedong thought. It's not dogmatic. It's just the first thing. That has three causes. Three causes. One, seeking truth from the fact. Two, being independent. See, serve the people. Okay, so, so it has three uh, main philosophies um, or three uh, issues. Uh, seek truth three from core. the. F three what? Three core. Three core. Three cores. Three core. Yeah. Three core. Okay. Uh, so serve the people, seek truth from facts, and be independent. Okay, so let's yeah. go through each w one of them. Um, they, they're still saying it's a tad soft. Can you? Is, I, I've I've put your volume up as much as I can. Can you see if you can turn up your volume for your microphone a little bit? I'm working on this and see how. Uh, uh. Yeah. It's, it, it's already much, the biggest. much better now. It's already the biggest now. Okay, so now, um, what exactly does it mean to seek truth from the facts? Um, this one's a very interesting one for me personally, because uh, in Western media, you get uh, sometimes you get facts and sometimes you get facts, but you never get the truth. Oh, uh, uh, fact. So okay, what? Okay. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. So what does that mean? Because this word means this this means one thing. 
because it's not dogmatic so you have to choose do everything based on the fact based on the real situation it means if you if there when there's a problem and if you want to give a solution or something make a solution or make a plan first you have to be real you cannot be like a you have to be open optimistic you can you cannot be like too much optimistic you just have to be very cool very cool down very calm down you just do everything based on the fact it's called seeking to some fact because truth is the truth it's, it has nothing to do with your hope you can hope something but you can you cannot change the fact that is uh, true um if i were to like make a, a stereotypical uh, like in the west they love um looking at the aesthetics of all the chinese wisdom but they don't like actually listening to the wisdom <laughs> and this is very um a wise thing uh, so the, the quick one question um what exactly does mao mean when he says idealism versus um materialism what's talking about idealism i in my opinion it's more about uh, like you are optimistic about something or something like this also it's in this situation it's more about ideology thing first in cpc history we learned our lesson from our failure First, when you focus too much on the ideology things, you just uh, you sometimes you will get lost, get lost of the facts. You will just uh, turn blind eye to them. Uh, okay, because um, I was I I have was looking up um, Mao has a lot of um, if you go to Marxist dot org, Mao has a lot of um collected yeah, yeah. works um uh, translated, which is really good. Um, so the the first the first tenant we kind of understand. You have to uh, seek the truth. Okay. The second one is be independent. Independent. For, like, what is the context behind this, and what does he mean here? Being independent means just the way we, for example, in our history, CPC was was made by Chinese people. There there's a four Chinese people who know the situation in China. Mm-hmm. So when you are independent, you can make your decision, make mm-hmm. your own decision mm-hmm. based on the facts. But if you have some, you have you take order from from outside. So people, by most cases, they have no idea what was going on in China. So they will make a wrong decision, or they make a decision from from their own imagination, which will cause a disaster. Uh, okay um that is kind of really uh true um so one thing is that um when i was uh, when i was I, I i haven't finished the course yet but i've taken certain parts of the course called mao zedong thought and the first thing they talk about is um sinicization of leninism so what they say mao took what lenin did and converted it to uh china to, to like make sense of, for china under the like the culture the language like the situation the culture the language the traditions so um is that part of being um independent you can take you can take that part into post both not only being independent you can take that into seeking to respond the fact as well Okay. Um. So I, I guess the main thing that they did differently than uh uh. There, I mean, there's a lot of things that they did differently because it's a different country. But one of the first things is that um it, under uh, Russia, it made sense to uh, work on the urban proletariat, and that because they were, they they came from the countryside, and they would always have to go back home, and they could be used as like a vanguard. But Mao did precisely the opposite, where he worked. On the rural peasantry, and not the urban proletariat. Um, so, what was the reasoning behind this? Well, talking about the uh, Western Revolution, you have to unify the mass. You have the majority of the people. But just nowadays, the majority of the people in China are the peasant class. 
Uh, oh, hold on one second. Um, but the majority of the people in Russia, like, uh, were also peasantry. It's just the way things worked. It, it just made sense for Lenin to start with the proletariat. Um, so, uh, oh. j just curious, like, um, uh, also, cause back to those days. Also, to back to those days, cause the it's like a strategy. It's not like trying CVC doesn't start everything at the urban, 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 urban place. They did, but failed miserably. What happened? Uh, so actually, the course does talk about the first failure, and then like in nineteen thirty seven. Uh, there was a, a the, like the, I believe there was two failures, and then like after the Japanese occupation, they decided to make a new strategy. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm talking about even earlier. Oh, okay. Before Mao, before Mao went to Qingdao China Mountain. I mean the Chozhou uh, in Chinese we call the Chozhou Mountain. Basically, the it's an uh, uprising during the during the autumn. Also, you, you have you ever heard of Nanchang? Chi, basically the uprising in Nanchang. No, I did have not. What is it? Okay. That's that's the beginning. That's the foundation of PRA. You know, in in China, in China, the in Chinese PRA, the birth of PRA, is August the first. That's the People's Liberation Army. Yeah. Go that's ahead. Because it's the day of the Nanchang uprising. It's to honor that 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 event. They they took order from because back to those days CPC's power not enough and not enough to like uh, take over those cities and uh, keep keep everything there. It's not it was not. So you have to start an urban urban regime urban place. When they started the city, the PNP used their army to fight against the CPC army. Ah, so, which they cannot take it. They can they cannot. They defend themselves, so they failed. They have to move to those mountains, to the over to the village. Uh -huh. So in, in so we kind of we all we all, we we both know all of us know what that is. Use the village to surround the city. Ah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Um and um so oh okay so a, a little bit m m more um. It's, it's it's kind of it's funny. Well, not funny, but it's amazing because um, very similar to the Bolshevik situation, the PLA had to. It wasn't just not the like. I guess I'm talking about the 1940s. It wasn't just the KMT that they had to fight. They had to fight the British, the Americans, the Japanese, like all of all the empires at once, and still win. And I was surprised yeah. I've, to learn this when I interviewed the rapper Jian Zhu on my uh, podcast about Taiwan. He told me that the PLA did not have an air force, and that's why they couldn't go get not, air force. Yeah, yeah, they didn't have an air force, so that's why they couldn't go get ta Taiwan. They have, they have an air force. They did. They do have. They did have. No, an air force. Oh, okay, but he's. What, what did they not have that allowed them to conquer Taiwan back in 1940s? What an idea! Cause let me put it this way. Because between mainland China and Taiwan, they are cannot. You, uh -huh. you, need the, you need the boat, you need the ship to go there. Mm -hmm. But just though mm -hmm. this, our Navy was not strong enough to do this. I mean, after the World Cup of Korean War, even before, she, before China sent our army to Korea, mm -hmm. Korea mm -hmm. U.S. already put their, their seventh fleet during the end of the Taiwan tunnel, which stops us from liberating Taiwan. And uh, talking about the Korean War, we do have some Air Force. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. bought those jets from Soviet Union. Uh, 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 that's very um, interesting. Um, okay, so now... Um, I, I guess the okay. second thing is that, yeah. okay, one of the, I, I'm just going to ask you, a, 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 I'm just going through some of my favorite pieces and just, I'm just going to ask you questions if you don't mind. Um, uh, so uh, uh, I, I really like um, one of Mao's pieces. Okay, so Mao had this thing called Little Red Book that was 
literally yeah. this thing and it had a lot yeah. like and it was written for people who didn't know how to read or who were new to reading and writing so it had a lot of um content in uh, a small like right wait are you talking about the little read book i'm i'm talking about the cost you know in kind of we do have that record the little read book it's it's for mouth work yes yeah, of this center of this article and it, this article is very clear and use the very simple word exactly um what i okay you're uh, it's funny because what lenin does is he wastes a lot of time like insulting people just like going off traffic um so mao doesn't do all that he's just very simple so i agree with you on that that that's the difference but the thing is think about it who you are dealing with mm -hmm. if you're not there you're dealing with a person who doesn't have a lot of knowledge okay mm -hmm. so if you want people to listen to you at least you should uh, make them feel you're worth them or you you are you're fighting for them you're not like i'm lower than you not i'm holy than you not this kind of attitude okay i'm holy than you not, not this not this kind of thing. it's like we're a team maybe i'm smarter but uh, still we're a team i fight for you i work for you i serve your interest uh, that makes sense um so then okay so now let's look at the second um tenant uh that you spoke about um oh no we already did be independent seek truth from facts uh, the third one is the serve the people um yeah. <laughs> so th uh, this is a lot because americans actually literally do not have this concept because their government does not serve the people so i always um uh say that it's kind of like when you're when you're a child with the abusive parents you just don't realize that other people don't have to have abusive parents. So, for example, the CIA is apparently going to spend billions of dollars gathering intelligence on China. And I read this article from CGTN, which says, just oh, like yeah, download I'm the like, five-year plan. <laughs> and, I sent you, sent you a link before, remember? Yeah. yeah. Um, the, uh, this call. Uh, where did you send the link? I uh, yeah, like a couple of couple of months ago. Yeah, I remember the link. Yes. Oh, what, 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 can you um explain? Uh, uh, yeah, no, I have. Um, can you explain? Uh, yeah, and it's funny because the CIA and and then the CGTN just said, just download our five year plan and read it. And literally, yeah, they don't. The CP, the Communist Party of China, doesn't actually keep secrets because it has 90 million people it like works differently right but in china all things are just uh, show to the public because talking about so the people mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. i know i know in america they could they said it from people for the people that kind of bullshit but it's just slogan it never happened who they serve they serve the wall street okay. yeah it's just slogan. Slogan is slogan. Uh, no, no, I'm looking through all the links. Which link? Are, I have all the links you've ever sent me. So which link are you talking so, about? So, so I sent you links that are like, yeah, I spend uh, like 300,000. Yeah, yeah, but I have that. Million. 300 million. Yeah, yeah. uh, yes, um, I, I know exactly which one. They, they actually, it's not the, the State Department budgeted Three hundred million dollars yeah. of anti-China, literally anti-China propaganda. Yeah. We'll put that at the end, um, uh, at the description box. But yes, um, yeah, for anti-China propaganda. Yes, by the way, it's not released by Chinese agents or something. It's by released from American agents, American government. <laughs> it's not like Chinese people make this up. You, you guys did this by yourself, okay? Yeah. yeah. Um. So what I see is that um. Yesterday in the Economist, there was an article about like China is making high speed, high speed trail. I mean, high speed trains, but is it too much? Like kind of like the Bloomberg one where it's like China's curing cancer, but are they curing too much? And it's because they just can't understand what the concept of having a government that serves the people is. <laughs> also, what our government to they do believe they will believe no one left behind. It's not slogan. Not like in America, they 
Liverpool, but you know what? They have no one left behind, but uh, actually they just left the majority behind. In kind of it's a different situation, okay? They, 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 we just uh, like finish the dream poor. It's dream poverty. We just finish the time. <laughs> like uh, the, 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 the public transportation is a big part of that project. Because mm-hmm. those people from like whatever Xinjiang, from Xinjiang province, <laughs> or from Ningxia province, which is really far from the coast, they benefit from that uh, high speed train system a lot. Uh, and, and that makes a lot of sense. I mean, the more remote you are, um, uh, uh, okay. The funny thing: Did you ever see my bridge tweet that the U.S. Congressman Dan Crenshaw like that drove him crazy? Yeah. Um, let, let me share the bridge tweet. Just give me one minute. Can you talk about? Um, it was really funny. I'll share the bridge tweet with uh, everyone else, but um, I'll put it in the chat. But uh, did you see that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was like, oh, look, it's a pretty bridge in China. Um, um, and let me see, where is it? I found it. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. So this is the bridge tweet. Um, it really, uh, and, and I'll find the Dan Crenshaw one, but um, here it is. And let me share the screen so that people can see the bridge tweet that drove a U.S. congressman totally crazy. Um, <laughs> um, I said, and this was the, how do you pronounce this bridge? It's a very beautiful bridge. Uh, I'm not sure called. It's called the, uh, uh, I forgot what the bridge name is, but... Because I'm quite sure they are putting all their money on this, uh, this kind of stuff in China. Not just a one. Okay. Anyways, um, so it's funny because it drove this U.S. congressman. Let me see if I can find it. Um, it drove this U.S. congressman like crazy. Um, <laughs> but anyways, um, so... Uh, yeah, uh, so it's the idea that, like, like, and, and he, it's because he knows that he's never serving the people, um, and that concept is alien to American politicians. Actually, it's so alien to American people, they don't even know what it looks like to have a government that serves the people. They just have a government that is calling, calling, calling themselves, we serve the people. Actually, that's, that's, that's no sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, um, well, can you tell us, okay, so now, now uh, let's continue a little bit more. Um, so we have those three tenets of, uh, and, and then where do we, I, I guess, with the, after ha- having understood those three tenets, if you want to further understand Mao Zedong thought, um, what, uh, like, where do you go where after you, this? Where to begin? Talking about this, you are, it, talking about Mao Zedong thought is like a Mark Mendes stuff. It's, it's, it's a way for you to think, to make a solution. Mm-hmm. So, talking about this, you have to put that in a, in a scenario, in a situation. How to wage a revolution based on those, those principles, based on those three, three philosophies. Um, okay, so, oh, I guess, so, if you, okay, suppose that you are doing a new uh, update of what is to be done for American yeah. Westerners. Where, what would you say about, uh, what, what would you say? Like, what is, uh, uh, so taking it, those three principles into account, where do we, they begin? <laughs> okay, about those three systems. First of all, you need to know those majority of them. Like, if you really want to do something for real, not those kind of stuff like a BIM, not like I'm not saying those racist uh, issues that exist in the West, but, uh, they just use that racist issue as the destruction to uh, to personally avoid the real issue. I mean, talk, I'm talking about the, the political si- the capitalist system. Yeah, um, a lot of uh, what people don't notice is that um, uh, like they've been protesting for like the most basics, like minimum wage, like the fight for fifteen dollars minimum wage. It's not that big of a deal, and it should not take um 
it, they've been fighting <laughs> allegedly for ten, since 2012. So that's nearly nine years to. <laughs> Yeah, you can do that in Snapchat as, as long as you do walk, but it's a one change of damn thing. Exactly, you and so, to, so yeah, so they, they'll never change it. Exactly, so what exactly? Um, first, of all, you, first of all, if you want to like serve uh, people, then you should you should do we should do this as a first as a first, as a first step. Who is the people? They are in America. They're probably majority very. Poor people who live in the Midwest, um, probably in the South. Uh, I, 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 they're generally people who live in the interior, not on the big cities. And uh, what else? Uh, they are not very well. They're very poor. They're struggling. They don't have um, health care. They, they don't. don't yeah. have health care. They don't have money. They don't have a proper job. Yep. Exactly. Also, I, as far as I know, there are two plays. One called the uh, Bible Belt. Bible Belt, yes, uh, that's in the south. Yeah, called the uh, Lost Belt. The yes, that's yeah. in the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, they call it rust because all the industries have decayed, because, uh, and now it's all rust. It's called the de deindustrialization of the West. Yes, it's only a kind of word. So those people are struggling. So very much. The, yeah, one of the stars are like, talking to them, to identify them, to tell them who who caused all those all these disaster. Uh, okay, the, the funny thing is, I spent oh, last year I spent a lot of time in South Carolina, and people who live in rural South Carolina who don't have access to clean water, whose roads are bad, who don't have uh, jobs, transportation, barely have enough food, they actually know who caused everything. It's a uh, uh, it's just that they don't know how to join together. Like, like they know, a, they're very smart people. Like, they know a way more than any intellectual, but they just don't have a way of um, joining together to fight to change things. So, see, this is the problem. The majority of the masses are not satisfied and not happy with the situation. Yeah. What they need is an organizer to organize everyone together. To make them a team. Mm -hmm. Cause it's not like cause the real issue is the capitalism system. Yeah. It's not like you are you are black and white and he's Asian. Not not those kind of nonsense. Okay. Every equal in every should be equal. If you really want to get those things done. Yes. Yeah, not not to make a drama. A a exactly, and I see a lot of um distract. Okay, so what I think I, I keep joking about this, but um somebody once made a tweet that's really funny where it's like liberals just want like more female kind of, like they don't want to get rid of the concentration camp. They just want to have like some yeah. black people and females being concentration camp guards. <laughs> have you seen that? It, it's a really funny tweet. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it later, but. That's the idea of a lot of liberals is that if you like have Obama as president, so basically you're having a few more concentration camp guards uh, that are different ethnicities, like they, they think that can make the problem go away. But so how do you, how does one figure out, let's say that there is somebody who's coming to your town and he's saying he's an organizer. How, how can you figure out whether he's going to be somebody like Obama who just wants to create like a more diverse concentration camp with more guards or somebody who wants to get rid of the concentration camp, somebody more like Lenin or Mao? Okay, talking about this, it, I, now that we're talking about Mao, you might not know what he's going to cause. The first thing to what the resolution is to know who is our enemy and who is our friend. Mm-hmm. If you really want to work the revolution, you must talk to the majority, talk to the real poor people. Talk to who? Talk to those who are really poor. Oh, okay. So those are um, um, people, I mean, uh, all I have to say is I've driven past West Virginia. I've been in South Carolina. And I have seen people so poor in South Carolina that it's even worse. In so I, I've never said, like, I, I was shocked. And I said, this is, is parts of it is... um. Looks worse. Literally, I'm not kidding. It looks worse than India. And in India, at least most places you get water that's not um, has le like wa water that's at least uh, drinkable. 
in some places in West Virginia and Appalachia, they don't even have clean water. So this is because we, first of all, you need an organizer. Then you, you should know not not only in your in your so, so the majority of course also in your team who is your enemy and who is your friend. Because talking about how to win the revolution, the first the first thing for us is to get the majority. Then the second thing is to take the power of this cost back. Which means we should be the one who the final which which one what is in prison, what is like what is what is like Wall Street or, or who is our friend who should who should be unified. Who should be like to take it out of the society or something like this. Uh and to me, that's really that's easy. Really Our easy. friend is um, anyone who wants um, to improve the lives of the prolet, like the working class, the, the the poor people. And our enemy is anyone who's trying to distract from that and keep status quo. Yeah, and the talking about this, we have the first. If I will do this, the first step, what I do the first, the, the second step, the first thing I do is just kick it all the ground. Because no this is liberal. A real leftist, okay? How can you oh, okay, quick, quick question. How can you tell when somebody's... Uh, I, 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 and by the way, um, besides reading Mao's on liberalism, which is really good, but how? W what exactly um, is uh, liberalism so that... Uh, actually, no, Mao wrote something called combating liberalism too. Um, so what exactly is liberalism for, for people? And so then we can understand how we can kick uh, people out who are liberals. <laughs> I would just share a very easy trick. When you when you talk to them about the war issue, they are not talking about class government. They are not talking about class. They are talking about racism. They are talking about the LGBTQ stuff. They are talking about the environmental stuff. They are talking about the animal rights. Mm -hmm. No need to ask. Those are liberals. Just kick them out. Okay, um, let me just read, okay, okay, this is actually a little, really short, so can I just like read a little bit of combat liberalism? Yeah. Okay, Ooh, okay, so it's from 1937, and I'll put the link in the chat as soon as I, uh, uh, I'll put the link in the chat right now, um, so that you guys can follow along, uh, but here it is, um, uh, okay, um, give me one second, um, Need more anarchists dunked on, Nazis ripped apart, and the libs' real intentions to be trotted out? Hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and then go over to historically.substack.com and check out our newsletter and podcasts. Okay, so I've put the link um, combat liberalism, so let me read from it. We stand for active ideological struggle because it is a part weapon for ensuring Ensuring, ensuring un unity within the party organization, within the party and the revolutionary organizations, in the interest of our fight, every communist and revolutionary should take this weapon. But liberalism rejects ideological struggle and stands for unprincipled peace, thus giving rise to a decadent Philistine attitude and bringing upon political degeneration in certain units and individuals in the party and revolutionary organization. Liberalism, uh, by the way, feel free to interrupt if you wanna clarify anything. Liberalism manifests itself in various ways. To let things slide for the sake of peace and friendship when a person has clearly gone wrong and refrain from principled argument because he's an old acquaintance, a fellow, a townsman, a schoolmate, a close friend, a loved one, a colleague, or an old subordinate, or to touch on the matter lightly instead of going into it so thoroughly as to keep it on good terms, the result is that both the organization and the individual are harmed. This is one type of liberalism. To indulge in irresponsible criticism in private instead of actively putting forward one suggestion to the organization, to say nothing to their faces but to gossip behind their backs or to say nothing at a meeting but to gossip afterwards to show no regard at all for the principles of collective life but to follow one's own inclination this is a second type to let things drift if they do not affect one personally this is uh liberals 101 um uh, uh to say as little as possible while knowing perfectly well what is wrong 
to be worldly wise and playing safe and seek only to avoid blame, it is a third type. Not on, not to obey orders, but to give pride of place to one's own opinions, to demand social special consideration from the organization, but to reject its discipline is a fourth type. To indulge in personal attacks, pick quarrels, vent um, personal spite, or seek revenge instead of entering into an argument and struggling against incorrect views for the sake of unity or progress or getting done work, getting the work done properly is the fifth type. To hear incorrect views without rebutting them and to even hear counter-revolutionary remarks without reporting them, but instead to take them calmly as if nothing happened, this is a sixth type. To be... Okay, go ahead. All those types are those like fake lessons. Mm, oh, yeah. You, this remember, is like a I, checklist for uh, BreadTube. <laughs> you remember, you read the article I sent you, like the, the, on, the, on, the, on the, like the top 10, I left that the 10, 10 different kind of fake lessons. Yeah, you yeah. Find all those stuff there. All of them are fifth in. Uh, okay, um, we have one comment. Um, Nando says, this conversation hits me so hard. My parents were both academic liberals and I went to a school where they preached European values and um, I, I got bullied and did nothing while the head teacher said to me to get on. <laughs> See, this is the thing. When talk about liberalism, it's all, you know, can it always like connect you, connect you to something called uh, individualism? <laughs> So what is individualism uh, for, for Americans? Like a lot of them just don't. I, I know these sound like basic questions that you probably guys have had in middle school, but for Americans, all this is new. So uh, please indulge us. And can you explain what it is to be like an individual versus thinking like a mass? If talking about individualism, you just focus on yourself, being selfish too. Like do their ideology is, I, as long as I don't affect other people, I can do whatever I want. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, but, but sometimes, not sometimes, but remember this, your behavior always affects others when you're in the group, <laughs> one way or another. Sometimes you just don't realize it, but that it does happen. Yes. So then no such thing called a, like, a, as long as it doesn't affect other people. It, it, it doesn't happen unless you live in a place you are, and you are the only one there. Then you would have affect other people. The society is made of people. Mm -hmm. People are connected to each other. That's a fact. Uh, yes. And uh, talking about uh, the liberalism, well, I would, I would take, uh, take uh, the religion and religion. Oh? Uh huh. I was talking talk about religion. Level. Some people said, uh, okay, uh, I mean, one kind of religion, I remember there is a kind of Judaism. They said, uh, because of this, I can, because of my rel religious belief, I cannot uh, be a soldier. I remember that there's something like this in Israel. <laughs> Perfectly wrong. Well. I remember that that, that, that thing didn't happen. And if, when, when, when it, that's in Israel, if that happens happen, in the other place, you will not go to go to a war because of religious belief and the way your country gets invaded. Uh, it will, that, that, if that, everyone does that, if everyone does this, <laughs> then, your, then your country will be no soldier, will be no army. Uh, I, I agree, but this is because in, the, in America yeah. has never gotten invaded, so all their wars are for like destroying other countries and for imperialism. Yeah. And that's exactly that is that example. Because in this situation, no one is principal. They all just do do their own do things in their own way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is not a team. It's a it's a, it's like an individual order. Order. No one can like, no one. There no team work there. So do you know why what people always like this? The the Western the Western like academia always promote this. No, I don't. Now, like, because it fits what we interest. Think about it. 
if everyone just work for themselves, everyone fight for themselves, then no team. Who will be the strongest? The Wall Street, the bourgeoisie class. Yeah. yeah. No one can fight them back. How can you just fight a company? Mm -hmm. Very difficult. So of course they were like this, they were promoted. Of course it's just their interest. Uh, it's not difficult, it's not really hard to imagine. Huh? If I want to promote an ideology to everyone, <laughs> that, that ideology must fit my interest. That is right. Um, okay, l let me continue. Um, to be among the yeah. masses and fail to conduct propaganda and agitation or to speak at meetings or conduct investigations and inquiries among them. Instead, to be indifferent to them, show no concern for their well-being, forgetting that one is a communist and be behaving as if one were an ordinary non-communist, this is the seventh type. To yeah, see is, go ahead. Just go ahead. The, it's like they just want to keep their position. They are not a real communist. They don't want to like, solve, the, solve the real thing. Well, the issue, when well, so, well, you see the issue as a communist issue, just tell, tell the party, tell the organization if we... Let's not then even <laughs> for being a communist. If for anyone, generally speaking, if you are in a team and then when your team is doing something, there's an issue, you should tell, tell everyone there's, a, there's an issue. If we don't fix this, uh, the problem will be big. We will be a like, big issue in the future. It's, uh, it's a basic attitude. It's basically what? It's a basic attitude to, to, to get the job done. Ah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's correct. Okay, now I understand. Okay. Yeah. To see someone harming the interests of the mass and not yet feel indignant or dissuade or stop him or reason with him, but to allow him to continue is an eighth type. Um, this reminds me of a Che Guevara quote when he says, if you do not tremble at the sight of every injustice, you're not a comrade of mine. So this seems, uh, can you talk a little bit about this? Actually, in my opinion, it's not only like you are not a comrade of yours. You are helping those criminals. Mm -hmm. the, the mass because you did if you don't report yet you didn't do anything you just let this happen i don't also you are you are you are having your own interest because you are worth the the mess as well don't forget that uh, what did you say i'm sorry because well, you are when you when you see someone like hurting the mass interest and you didn't do anything uh -huh. not only like you, you are hurting your own interest as well because you, you are worth the mass. Mm -hmm. Don't forget that. You are worth the society. If someone is harming your society interest and then you don't do nothing for, for no matter what kind of reason, mm -hmm. you hurt yourself. Don't forget that. That's right. Um, to half heartedly or without a definite plan or direction, to work perfunctorily and muddle along. So as long as one remains a monk, one goes on toiling, 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 toiling. Mm -hmm. Tolling the bell is a ninth type. Mm -hmm. Do you think with a parent? That sounds like a disaster for me. Okay. <laughs> to regard oneself as having rendered great service to the revolution, to pride oneself on being a veteran, to disdain minor assignments while being quite unequal to major tasks, to be a slipshod in work and a slack in study, that is the tenth type of liberalism. Uh, to be un... Sorry. To be aware of yeah. one's own mistakes, yet make yeah. no, no. Att attempts. Um, oh my God. Okay. Thank you so much. Give, uh, can I send a typical for? Yes, we can. Just give a, we'll do it right after we read this. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, okay. So to be aware uh, is the 11th type. We could name more, but these 11 are the principal types. They are all manifestations of liberalism. Liberalism is extremely harmful, harmful in a revolutionary collective. It is a corrosive which eats away unity, undermines cohesion. Oh my God. Um, thank you so much. Um, give me one minute. We'll answer this right after we finish this. Okay. Um, um, liberalism is extremely harmful in a revolutionary collective. It is corrosive, which eats away unity, undermines cohesion, causes apathy and creates dissension. It robs the revolutionary ranks of compact organization and strict discipline, prevents policies from carried, from being carried through and alienates the party organization from the masses match the party leads. It is 
an extremely bad tendency. Liberalism stems from petty bourgeoisie selfishness. It places personal interests first and the interests of the revolution second. This gives yeah. rise. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like liberalism is always related to the individualism, which will always make it themselves before the majority, before the party, before the king, right? Yep. Uh, okay. So so let's continue. Um. Um. Oh, you're. Up, I mean, yeah, that is literally liberalism because, um, yeah, liberalism is where you like that. Well, as like Lenin says, the liberals are afraid of the people. Literally, they fear the people more than the plague. Like, so they want to keep power away from the people, right? Okay. Um, let's see. Um, people who are liberals looked upon the principles of Marxism as abstract. Dogma. That's so right. I hear this all the time. Um, they approve of Marxism, but are not prepared to practice it or to practice it in full. They are not prepared to replace their liberalism by Marxism. These principles have their Marxism, but they have their liberalism as well. They talk about Marxism, but practice liberalism. They apply Marxism to others, but liberalism to themselves. They keep both kinds of goods in stock and use and find a use for each. This is how the mind of certain people work. Liberalism is a manifestation of opportunism and conflicts fundamentally with Marxism. It is negative and objectively has the effect of helping the enemy. That is why the enemy welcomes its preserve preservation in our mind midst. Such yes. being its nature, there should be no place for it in the ranks of the revolution. We must use Marxism, which is positive in spirit, to overcome liberalism, which is negative. A communist should have largeness of mind and he should sta be staunch and active, looking upon the interests of the revolution as his very life and subordinating his personal interests to those of the revolution. Always and everywhere he should adhere to the principle and wage a tireless struggle against all incoherent ideas and actions so as to consolidate the collective life of the party and strengthen the ties between the party and the masses. He should be more concerned about the party and the masses than about any private person and more concerned about others than about himself. Thus, only thus can he be considered a communist. In all, in loyal, honest, active, and upright communists must unite to oppose the liberal tendencies shown by certain people amongst us and to set them to the right path. This is one of the tasks of the ideal, uh, ideological front. Um, so, um, okay, so for this question, can you answer this uh, if you can see it? Um, it says, thoughts on Vijay Prasad and his support of commun China communism. Oh, wait a minute. Who's this guy? Uh, somebody who paid via Super Chat. Well, no, I'm, I'm talking about... Uh, I guess, so. Oh, okay. Then, um, okay, so how, how about this? Um, he will look this up and answer it later. Okay. So the next question the next is, um, he, can I send a typical Western article ab about Mao to debunk? Yes. Give us one second and I will pull this up. Um, Okay, um, so give me just one, okay, we're just gonna, give us just one min minute, um, watch this ad. Need more anarchists dunked on, Nazis ripped apart, and the Lib's real intentions to be trotted out? Hit the like and subscribe buttons below, and then go over to historically.substack.com and check out our newsletter and podcasts. Uh, give us one more minute, um, listen to this, uh, okay.
Okay, um, so this is the uh, article that he wants us to talk about. I will send it to you via VChat also if you want to uh, look at it. Um, but um, I guess he wants to, us to debunk this article, and I bet you it's just a lot of nonsense. But um, it, let me know if you have any um, uh, comments or, or anything as I scroll through. Oh, wait a minute, because this one is not big enough. I need oh, okay, let me make it bigger then. Uh, tell me if it's big enough now. Okay, yeah. Can you okay. name the mass? It, don't worry about it. it. Most of it is nonsense. Um, uh, so, uh, okay, this is the first one. Mao's number one enemy is the intellectual. That is absolutely nonsense um, because he taught millions, if not, billions, how to read. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, can we talk okay. a little wait, bit about... Wait, 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 just talk about the mouse, the enime of the internet lecture, I want to add, add up one thing. Even do even before 1949, the Communist Party, the Red Army, the Communist Party Army, I mean Chinese Red Army. The PLA. The, the PLA, the, the, liter the literature rate is way bigger than the KMT Army. Oh, absolutely. Um, you can't be a, and in, in fact, Mao was a librarian and he, uh, that's like how he got started, right? So, um, there were things that were never in, in, um, there were some languages in China that did not have a writing script. And after the Chinese Communist Party came in power, they gave them a new script to write with, right? Those um, people know, uh, even, even not just change the Chinese character on the like very complicated stuff to simplify the Chinese character. The thing is, this, this happens during mouse era, just in case you don't know. Just to simplify the Chinese, Chinese, basically the Chinese we are using now. Oh, okay, so before it was a different script? Yeah, yeah. Like if you read those Chinese, Chinese from Taiwan or Hong Kong, Mm -hmm. They're totally different than the Chinese character I use. I did not so know this, that. Uh, this is called a simplified test character. Oh, wow. Um, um, so, um, then the, okay, so, uh, let's, um, uh, this is, okay, this, uh, this is, um, what? You're, okay, this is a quote that's, like, totally nuts. Okay. Um, the most inhumane example of Mao's contempt. Okay, no, I don't think people understand what the West was doing and how China was not food sovereign. Like, China could not grow food back then to uh, basically feed its people, right? Also, there was three years naked disaster. In Chinese, we call it the three years naked uh, disaster. Oh, what was it called? Three years, like mass natural disaster. Oh, a famine. Yeah, yep. Uh, okay. Yep. So, um, oh, what happened? Um, a, 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 and what three years was that? Uh, I cannot remember the the exact number. Oh, uh, let me get, take a check. Okay. Um, d don't worry about it. Um, okay. So no. the funny thing is what people don't realize is um, with the grape leap forward, it was because agriculture was not mechanized. So that meant a lot of people were just like stuck uh, to working the land because they didn't have um, mechanized agriculture. So you couldn't send children to school because you needed them to plow your land. So and the West also sanctioned um, sanctioned. Uh, 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 them and they couldn't import like a lot of the things they needed. So that's what the next part is really funny because he uh, gives away the 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 what do you call it the the secret like like the quiet part out loud. He says a deadly combination of okay disastrous farming methods, <laughs> profitable tea plantations, were turned into rice fields. Guess what? I love tea. I drink tea every day. But tea, you cannot eat tea. You can um, tea does not still solve your hunger. Uh, rice does. So this is really hilarious that he just kind of. <laughs> did you see that part? Also, also the place you to rise to 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 try to rise. There's two different kind of fuel. Tea, 
tea trees will not fall on on the mountain. You do right. You don't grow your your rice on the mountain, right? No, you can't. It's impossible. So okay, the tea no, plantations no, no. were、uh, in areas where they should be growing rice. And people in China were going hungry because the West wanted profit over people in China being fed. Also, also the next graph, photograph here was even even way ridiculous than the than the, than the first one. I mean, the death from the hunger reached more than fifty percent of some Chinese region. That's the, I mean that's just like they just like made up crap. I mean that's just like a um okay. Okay, and, let me let me tell you how, where this number came from. Okay. It's called. They said it's like a thirty million of or of forty million. This number is from a scholar from Taiwan. He said,、uh, if if Chinese the 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 population rate, the population growth rate doesn't change in the three years, it should be this this number. And then minus the <laughs> the current number, then the difference is three. In thirty million, so they the this where the so this thirty million people go, they will stop to death. Come on, when there's a natural disaster, you don't want you don't want to get worse, okay? Yeah. The birth rate is very low. No, no. And no. that is that is a guy who never been to me in China. It's made up. That's a number. What? No, no. They keep making up numbers. Um, somebody, uh, my my favorite. I I I make a joke. Um. I say that、um, uh, somebody once like tried to say that Stalin killed some. I said、uh, so. There's a million, there's a billion, there's a trillion, and then the next number after that is Stalinian, and that's the number of people that Stalin killed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah, with I, Mao, I, I, they I, just I, also make up numbers. Um. Mao is wrong. Also is wrong. When last time they said three, so they so they said one of them say three trillion. There's no this many. There was no this many Chinese people. Back to those days, even not now. And, 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 yeah, they just like okay. Um, so uh, Steve said, "Is there a Grover for for debunking these Mao lies?" And the, the entire country of China. I mean, they're like the entire country of China. Um, probably. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Let's see. Um. And thank you so much, Ivan. This is so sweet. Um. We need more, please. More.、Uh, yeah. Um. So then,、uh, let's see. Maybe this is better. You no, know, this is too small. Um. Okay. Um. Let's see. Um. L- let's continue with this. Rounding up enemies. Of course, that's a great idea because your enemies are Japanese fascists, American imperialists. Pawns of American imperialists,、um, landed landlords,、um, every, basically the entire KMT in Taiwan. <laughs>、yeah. Okay.、Um, okay. Whatever. This is ridiculous.、Um, who cares?、Um, okay.、Um, uh, this is also a ridiculous number, and it, uh, okay.、Um, uh, what? Okay. This is. Really, really insane. Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, okay, good. Thank you. That's why、uh, the CIA agents were killed. Okay, this is just like a lot of insane. Um, foaming at the mouth. Um,、uh, okay, I can make it. I can make it. I don't even have to make it all the time. Okay, we we can just check、uh, American history and see what they have done. Uh yeah um like um ex- extreme、uh, I mean what have they not done is a be- except any everything except a, like making life better for the people. Okay, if you want to like do this, I don't have to talk about all of every stuff or women stuff. Like if you just if I told you just like you, you, I think there's a third type of alcohol. We love drinking warm water, right? Yeah. Do you know how this third type came from? Where this like came came from? No. Cause during the during the Korean War, American army they just send the they they wage the uh by all by all this war on Chinese people.、Mm-hmm. They send the mosquito, the cockroach, which brings out of virus.、Mm-hmm. They 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 spread those stuff on Chinese to land. Wow! In disease. Then our government our central government just tell you、uh, when you drink water you you have to blow it. What、mm-hmm. think about when you drink the boiled water? It's warm water. 
It'll make sure of that. That um, makes, um, wait, oh, yeah, I, I, what did oh, they do yeah, with the water again? I'm sorry, I don't understand. Can you repeat? They boil the water. They boil the water first, the the and they drink it. Ah! That's, that's how we do it. So when you boil the water, that way you get it warm water. You get rid of the germs. We get rid of the germs. Because I, I imagine just uh, slew those biological weapons. With a cockroach, with mice, with with mosquito, with all the kind of stuff. Uh, um. Okay, hold on. Let me answer this. So, no, the famines. The not, notice I said plural famines. Like back in the day, China had famines every like ten years, eight years. So that had everything to do with the revolution. Um, and the numbers they, they still totally made it up, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sending you a, a picture. Mm-hmm. You can translate that Chinese into English. Yeah, let me translate this on WeChat. Um, but, but, but what's up? Go ahead. Oh, yes, yes, on your WeChat. You can. You can yeah, yeah, I'll translate it, but the, I'll put it up. For, uh, you can start talking, and I will continue. I, I will put it up, and um. That's a, that's a, that's a picture. That's, that's a picture from what I'm just talking about. Like Americans and those like put a biological war on China. Mm-hmm. So we start to war those war first and bring them after. Mm-hmm. That's how those warm war came from. Uh, uh, wait, I'm sorry, what did you say? What? Can you repeat what you said because I, did, I, I couldn't hear you uh, too well. Oh, oh this picture was talking about where those warm Warm water still type came from. Uh huh. This is like the official media, like to prove my point here. Oh, okay. Because um, uh, Americans poisoned the water. They they sent all those like chair, those mosquito or cockroach, which brings all those germ of those disease virus. Uh huh. So, so we. If we want to keep, to keep healthy, we have to like uh, kill the mosquitoes. Ah. And then, and then, so maybe the, the, the waterfall will put it. So before we drink it, we have to boil it. Ah, okay. So this is um, what uh, you sent to, and I translated it on WeChat, which is really cool. Um, during the war to resist U.S. aggression and to aid Korea, the U.S. Army launched a germ warfare in Northeast China. Dropping poisonous inflects, okay, insects such as fleas, flies infected with plague and cholera. In order to prevent disease, Love Country Health Campaign was carried out throughout the country. The boiling the water to drink hot water disinfection or protect the country means. Drink hot water has become the most simple way of care. Watch the Red Story narrator competition. <laughs> Yeah, this this is where it came from. See, it's TV. Wow. Um, yeah. So a lot of yeah, like, like I said, a lot of this is I, I usually when the West says something about China. Okay, this is there's a funny rule um, that Adam uh, Johnson made up. It's called the North Korea rule of journalism. Where if it's like an enemy country, you just uh, with, okay. If it's North Korea, I just ignore it. Like I don't even bother fact checking. I just assume it's a lie because it's so stupid. But um, usually, the uh, more the West has an enemy, the bigger the lies are. So it's like it goes from like uh, basically it's from like Britain is usually they don't lie too much more than normal I guess more than but then when you go to North Korea they just are like oh Kim Jong Un killed this guy but wait this guy was re we even have a joke about this we call this the Juch necromancy machine where they can bring people back from the dead because they say all these random people are dead and they're not <laughs> um, do you know why they do this no of course. You know, the, it's called the uh, military in this complex. They want to wage a war. When they want to wage a war against that country, because some country will not invade America. Mm-hmm. Invade America. You have to invade them to make your own soldier not to feel guilty. You have to dehumanize those people first. See, you are killing those monsters. Those, those are not humans, those are monsters. See what they did to their own people. 
So you don't have to feel guilty when you kill them. Ah, that. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. Wow, I did not realize this. Okay, that makes, and that's why they have the Saddam Hussein with the incubator. I mean, some of them are ridiculous, like Saddam Hussein with the incubator babies or the human shredder. Um, it, it, it was just, it, yeah. Even those, those like uh, Xinjiang, Xinjiang. Remember, they said that's genocide in Xinjiang. Yeah, there. I, uh, oh, and it's because um, I, I did a stream about this, but I looked up what Adrian Zenz was calling genocide, and it was this. Um, so in China, they have this birth control called the copper tea, which is an intrauterine device, and it sticks up like it, it, it's like so that it prevents implantation in somebody's uterus. And he basically reasoned that because women were getting this birth control, that they were like. Uh, he has a he was a weird Christian, so he called that like abortion. And since abortion is murder, he then said uh, like uh, he's I don't know. It was ridiculous. He said like seven million. His logic was that seven million babies weren't being born or something really stupid like that. Okay, okay, okay. Talking about this, I want to add something else. Okay, that's that's called birth control from the one child policy, which mm -hmm. is not applied to the weight of people. Nope. No, absolutely not. For which which is totally lie. That's yeah. It. I said it, I'll go and support like 10 million people in camera. Do you know how this number came from? No. Yeah. Those, those called the generous, they actually just uh, give an interview to eight people. Literally eight people. Eight and people? Uh, eight people. They work done that they heard they have some relatives who were put in that kind of campers. Uh huh. And they divide the whole population. Of Xinjiang into eight, and they got them. Uh, oh, so they multiply. Okay, so they they asked eight people to tell them how many people of their friends went to these uh, uh, centers, and then they multiplied it. Wait, how did they do they it? Only, they, they, they interviewed eight people. Okay. They only one people said she she had she got a of his friend or his relative or whatever. So who got to the camp camp. So mm -hmm. they just avoid the population of Xinjiang today. Oh, wow. That's the, that's the, that's the, you can you know what women and people in the campus, I, I, I forgot the number from, from there. It's like a slice of nothing. Because the, the little demo, remember him? The little demo, she was that. Ah, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Um, And so, um, the worst the hardest part is um getting through the noise so in america it's like not that hard to get um uh like for me i can write an article but the problem is that like i i i can't compete with um let's say or uh, like the total amount of just sheer noise and cr crap so do you have any um suggestions for people who uh are uh, class conscious, are um, revolutionary thinking, but they don't know how to get past the noise of crap. Uh, about this, just uh, you guys stop debating on debating though with those like take less or something. You guys go to the go to the people, go to the mass. Talk to you. Talk. How, how do we go to the people? Like, well, what do you? Okay, can you? Okay, let's be specific. Okay, let's say that you live in a town in Ohio. Yeah. What is going to the people to going to look like? What, what should they do? Like, can you give them like a? If you were to write a instruction guide, what would you say? What What should they do? Uh, okay, talking about Ohio, I remember this. Uh, this is a city which over a lot of there are a lot of events here, right? All the events are struggling. You go to them. You talk to them. You ask. Well, are, okay, by going to them, you mean visiting their houses? No, you don't have to visit their houses. So I walk to them on the street. Yes. I love that they have their organization. Like those veteran, like brotherhood or something like that. Yeah. You talk to them. You ask, you, you... See, just think about how Christianity did it in the first place. They just go to people and talk to them. Yes, that's what uh, Christians do. <laughs> so, you, they, um, you can just use their way. You, it's like you don't have to like give yourself a lot of rules. 
you can we can even live by our enemy i'm not okay. saying i'm not saying like christianity our enemy. i'm like i'm saying like we can live by anyway you know you know i don't hate her you know just don't make don't get me wrong okay i'm talking about other other people that's the work okay the 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 skill of convincing people it's just it's your convincing people is great we can learn that part that's all i'm talking about i'm not talking about the, 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 the genocide thing. i'm talking about his way of like giving a speech to convince people that makes a lot of sense um so and, and the funny thing is I, I i'm not sure about mao but i i read kim il Sun's um biography and he started in an empty schoolhouse with 10 people and that's how they started the korean workers party or whatever um so I, I, yeah um i guess maybe to have some sort of like study circle reading group something like that reading group and also you you should not just do this how you not sure just to organize those people how so people are struggling they care more about the their their, their lunch more than the ideology speak after you organize those people why not just to just use them just organize them together to make a company or something to make a what? To make a company, to make a living. Uh huh. How do you do that? Just uh, well, no, deliberate. Uh, deliberate all deliberate this kind of industry, which need a lot of human labor. Organize a company like this. Give them, give them a life. You need to make, give them. Don't don't just always talk about uh, those like uh, just, just talk about uh, ideology ideology. Ask uh, everything. Yeah, this this should be tough. But then at the same time, you should make them uh, make them work, give them a job. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So you're saying okay, okay. I I see what you're saying. Like so that they have a way of uh, of like b being um not struggling. Yeah, you should solve their problem. If you cannot solve those problems, you just solve the problem. What's the point? Everyone can point out the problem, but the who can solve the problem? Uh, okay, exactly. If you can't solve the problem of the people you are trying to reach out, how are you going to solve the problem of the nation? Yeah. Um, that makes a perfect sense. Um, so I guess um, I guess that's where you would begin. Um, by the way, uh, I have a question. Um, uh, it seems like. Uh, people really like this. Um, are you available next Monday too? Oh no, no. Let's first talk about your chan YouTube channel and your uh, new media ideas. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm uh, I'm I'm planning to make a channel with my friend uh, Sia, but uh, we are preparing this for you to start the next January. Because mm -hmm. uh, she has an important issue, and uh, we need to call. Is the, we want to like the audience. We want to not only Western people as well. So we will make a, like a bi language title, including Chinese and English. So it will take some time to do this. Uh, in in our series, I'm, I'm gonna show show you guys something. Most Western media mostly will not talk about. Mm -hmm. Something for real. That is um. That is a great. Um, that is my promise. If you want to go to my channel and you want to see those like uh, that, that stuff from this that mainstream, you don't have to come. Because I'm not talking. I'm not. Talk, I'm not gonna repeat what the mainstream are talking about. I'm gonna show you guys something you will not see. But your your elite your elite class knows. That is a uh, excellent thing. Um, so, um, and you want to launch it in January? Yeah, probably next year. Uh, okay. Um, by the way, somebody's asking for the link to your YouTube page, and we'll put it um uh, as soon as you uh, send it to me. Um, the second thing is, are you available next Monday for having another Monday morning with Mao? Yeah, I will be available. Oh, course, we're talking about the YouTube page. We haven't talked about anything. It's, it will be like next next year or so. It still will be still like uh, two or three, three, two or three months left. So don't be don't be hurried. Uh, okay, so he okay, so it's gonna be uh, uh, coming up on um the next few uh, months. 
Okay, that's gonna be amazing. And I guess we're gonna be back next Monday at nine o'clock um, Eastern time, also nine o'clock China time for a to Isha Yeah, what happened? I cannot hear you. Uh, give me one give second. Me one. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah no, it's okay. Okay, so um, I said next Monday. Uh, so I guess we'll be back next Monday for another mm -hmm. installment of Monday Mornings with Mao. I, I'm, I'm, uh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> okay, so with that... Um, Thank you, everyone, and I guess um, uh, we'll put on the, I, I know you guys like the old song more, so we'll put on the old song, but what I'll say is Smirti Fascismo Slabodu Narodu.